Welcome to Karen Delahunty Sewing and Knitting Centre and today we're going to unbox the J318 Janome sewing machine. This review of the Janome J318 um, is something that we're doing through our shop Karen Delahunty Sewing and Knitting Centre um, and it's not sponsored by Janome in any way. So we'll unbox the machine now. So inside the machine we've got the instruction book and the soft cover. To lay this on the side the machine should come out here now. Here we are. There we are. So what you get with this machine is your foot control and the lead, your soft cover, the instruction manual and a guarantee, two years guarantee. And then inside you get the accessories that just sit inside this little free arm. Right, so you get the basic accessories with your machine, you get your buttonhole foot pack of needles, some bobbins, screwdriver and a seam ripper and picker which is there and these will all fit neatly back into this accessory box. I'll give you a little bag to put them in as well if you want to. Okay so this is the J318 Janome sewing machine and we're just going to run through the actual machine itself. So. Just turn this this way a little minute. So you've got your stitch selector here, which you choose your stitches A to I. So if you turn your dial from A, B, C, D, well that will choose the stitch that you want here. So A would be your straight stitch, B is over to the left on the straight stitch and C zigzag and we'll go through the rest in a little moment. So when you want to choose your stretch stitches or your satin stitches which is classed as the SS um, here and it's these ones here you turn this dial here to the SS button and then when you choose A, B, C or D you would then be getting these stitches out there and they correspond with the letter of that one there. The Janome J318 sewing machine comes with 18 stitches and they're all down here. Your buttonhole you need to select the buttonhole shape at the top there and it corresponds here with one, two, three and four. So as you sew it you'll stitch the first side down, you do the top end, the reverse and then back again. So the Janome J318 comes with obviously stitch selector and then a stitch length. The stitch length will alter the length of the stitch coming forward but there is no width control on that machine, there's no, no dial for the stitch width might be a slight downside to the machine but for a beginner this is pretty adequate. So this machine comes with a reverse button as well to tie off the end of your stitches and your seams and it's just here and you press it down. You hold it down while you're sewing. Your thread tension is on the top here, it's nice and easy, you can see it directly above your needle and that's for your top tension for your thread. The machine comes with a free arm which basically means that you can pull this out and you've got your free arm there. The free arm, when it's taken off, gives you the ability to put sleeves or trousers around there, um, hence go around on a full round on a circle. When you pull this little door down here, you've got the bobbin area. If you can see the little lever there, you just pull it out to get access to your bobbin. So then you've got a bobbin case and a bobbin, which we'll fill up in a minute. Also underneath here, there is a facility to drop the feed dogs. That's these little teeth at the top here, normally feed the fabric through. There's a lever there that you just push along and it drops the feed dogs. That enables you to do free motion sewing. When you push it back, it looks as if they're not there. Just turn the wheel and it will click back up. 
This part of the machine is the flywheel that moves the needle up and down and will form your stitches for you. We've also got on this machine a needle threader. The top needle threader, which is this lever, let me just find it, this lever here. And we'll go through that in a little bit more detail when we actually thread up the machine. You've also got on the side of this machine a thread cutter and it's just here. The machine's also got a handle on here and when you lift it, it's fairly lightweight actually, um, it's six kilograms. So that is quite easy actually to lift up and take to a class. If you did want to take this to a class, you could use a soft cover as well or just for a dust cover to keep it safe when you've got it at home. Um, you could use a dust cover provided and this is it here and it would sit over the machine like that and the handle will come through so that you can carry it. So obviously it's going to protect it to a degree. Um, I would have preferred it to have come with a hard cover um, but I suppose for price point you know, for a beginner it's absolutely fine. Um, taking it to a class and backwards the hard cover would be better in, in some respect but it just depends how careful you are. So the sewing machine as I showed before does come with a couple of feet, a buttonhole foot and a normal foot and you can get other accessories too. But these are the feet on the machine here, so this one's attached. Um, now they're very easy to swap around. So there's a little lever, I'm just going to turn the machine around a little bit so you can see. This little lever here, you just push there and they've clipped, they've come off. Um, so to clip them with the feet back on, you don't have to press this at all. Um, you use the lever that's just inside here, which lifts the foot presser up and down, and it clips onto the feet. I'll have to come around this way a bit. Clips onto the foot like that, and there you are, you've, you've attached your foot. So there are lots more accessories you can get for this machine. Um, but if you do look for them or you want them to, to fit this machine, they've got to be a category A. So this machine has a 60 watt motor. It's ideal for your um, general cotton weight fabrics, but wouldn't expect it to go through um, a heavy curtain weight. It's ideal for a beginner. So to thread this machine up, we're going to start with the bobbin area. This machine comes with an oscillating bobbin and we'll show you how to thread that up now. It's inside here. So we take this free arm off and you'll find it inside here. It, the oscillating bobbin means that it comes with a bobbin, which is this bit here, inside a case. Now I did that quite quickly, so just to show you how to get that out, there's a little lever here that you pull to take out the whole thing and then you've got your case and your actual bobbin. That's the bit we've put the thread on. This bobbin case has got a tension there, so it has a tension on the bottom, and then when you thread up the top, you have a tension on the top. Each thread has to have a tension. So if you haven't got it in a tension in either of them, and it's not incorrectly in the top or the bottom, then you'll have loop stitches. To thread it up, we need this bobbin here. This, on your machine at the top here, you've got your bobbin spool and you pop it on like that. There's two little metal prongs here that you lift up. You can use either of these but this is where you're going to place your thread. We pop our thread onto the top and then you've got to take it across to this little button here. This has, if you can see, I put my nail through there, you can see there is a spring in there. That is part of this tension I'm talking about. Everything has to go under a tension. If it doesn't go under a tension, when you thread this bobbin up and wind it round, it's going to go all slack and loose. So we've got this in the tension in there. Now we're going to take it around the actual bobbin. So we're going to take it across and from the back of the bobbin and we're going to turn it around So then to wind this bobbin now, we've got to push the bobbin itself over. Okay, so that engages the bobbin winder. And then you pull the flywheel out. Both of those will stop this needle going up and down. We're going to plug in the electrics and um, we'll carry on with the bobbin. The electrics here goes into the connection at the side of the machine, just in there like that. So normally you would have the um, foot pedal 
down here, but I'm just going to show you how this foot pedal works. On the side here is your switch to turn the machine on, and then you've got your light that you can see as well. So now we're ready to wind the bobbin. So we'll put some pressure on the foot pedal, and I'm going slowly so I can, you can see it's got to actually get in the bobbin between the two pieces of plastic there inside and it's got to go evenly up and down otherwise you'll get loops and that that's your tension there that's causing that to happen and you can go quite fast with it as well so when you finish winding the bobbin you push this back over here and this you forget sometimes to put this in but if you push this in it actually disengages the bobbin winder mechanism and then your needle is then able to start sewing again. Um, some people forget that and then they wonder why on earth the machine is going and a, a whirring noise and you need to just push that back in. Okay and it's quite an easy bobbin to thread up um, as long as you've got it in that tension there it'll work. Okay so we take that off and then we just you can either snap that or cut that off but that's your bobbin ready to go in. So we'll show you how to put the bobbin into the actual case itself. So this is the bobbin case here. Now I find that sometimes when you actually, because this, this bobbin here has got to actually go into that case there. Make sure that your bobbin is going clockwise. Okay. And then you put this bobbin into there with your piggy tail up facing upwards like that. Now I find that sometimes when you go to put this back into your machine that when you hold that lever to hold the whole lot together you find that this keeps falling out. So I tend to hold the whole thing like that. It's a lot easier. There's a little hole in there and that has got to fit onto the area in here which I'll show you in a minute. In there, in that bobbin housing place for it, where it goes, you can see a pin and there's a hole there where that's got to go as well. But just before we do that, we've got to make sure that this thread is in its tension on there. So having gone clockwise with it, there's also a little slot just there. You can see, I don't know if you can see here, this, there's a metal piece. This is your tension. So you've got to pull it up and under like that and it should just hang like that, okay? And then it's got some tension behind it. So again, right, so I hold this like that, so it's gonna go on its pin, and you just get it on the pin to start with, and then you see this piggy tail, there's a space there for it, there's a shape for it. I've just got to bend over a minute to find it, there we go, there. And you hear the click. When you hear the click, you know it's in, okay? I'm gonna leave that like that for a minute, because when we've stopped done our top thread, we've got to get this bottom thread up to the top. And we can't do that until we've threaded the top one. Okay, we're threading the top thread now then. So your top thread in comes across the top of the machine, ignoring this bit now, because that is just purely for bobbin. Some people tend to wind around that as well and then they get um, some awful stitches coming out because it's too tight. It's got numbers on the machine here, and you've got number one, which you're going under there. You're following it down, past the tension. This is your tension disc here, which we talked about. Should be on a four for a normal weight thread. You didn't, shouldn't really need to ever alter that, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So then you're gonna go round and up like the arrow shows you here, and up here. Now at the moment, you can't see where the thread goes from here. That's because we've moved the needle around. This flywheel moves the whole thing, including this take-up lever and the needle. So if you take it towards you, you'll see it move up. There it is. So then you're gonna come round and back out again. So it's actually in that loop there. Then back down, and then we're going to go around the, the little bit of metal there that takes your thread guide round there. That's around one of the thread guides. And then there's another thread guide just around the back of the needle, which is there. Just grab it for you. There, like that. Okay. Right, now then. There is a needle threader. We talked about this earlier. There's a needle threader with this machine. 
The only way the needle threaders work is if your needle is in the highest position. So, if I turn this just a little bit so, you, so I can see it, you actually turn the wheel towards you until your needle will come up in as high a position as you can get it. Right, needle threader then will then work. This is the needle threader here and I do it in stages. I tend to do, rather than coming right down, because what's going to happen is that needle's going to come, this needle threader is going to come right down and the wire at the back of there is going to come through from the back, through the needle, through to the front. So if you try and do that all in one go and try and catch your thread here, it's a little bit difficult. So it's easier to catch your thread under there first and keep your thread up, then bring it down and round, then take your thread Actually, this one will stay, I think. Let's just see. Some of the Janome ones actually just stay and others you have to hold. This one I'm going to hold anyway. It goes across there and then you go underneath the little white, little clip really, I suppose. But it's going to catch, the, the wire's going to catch the thread. Now, your tendency to hold this on your right hand here too tight. But as you do, you've got to release a little bit of slack from here as you're also moving your hand here backwards and then there's your loop there. So then we've got to get the bottom thread up to the top so we can start sewing. How you do that is you hold your thread here on your needle and you turn this flywheel towards you and you'll see the thread come down and round the bobbin from the top. So the top thread's coming round, it's going to pick up the bottom thread one full turn and then pull and there it is. It's nice and easy. And then you put all this back up together ready to sew. So that's the thread cutter there that cuts you both threads off ready to sew. So I think this machine is quite easy to thread um, because you've got the numbers that you can follow. Um, so you can't really go wrong, you're just following exactly where, where the guides go and the thread guides are quite easy as well. Um, and say so having the needle threader really helps. Now we're ready to sew. We've got stitch selector here and we've chosen A there and our stitch length is two and a half so we've chosen that and it's two and a half is for a cotton weight fabric and the tension for this thread is a four. Normal weight thread uh, is four and any other threads you would change it but we can talk about that later. So to, you then put your fabric underneath the foot and there's a lever at this side here that actually places the foot down so the fabric is squashed now between the feed dogs and the actual stitch foot and then it's ready to sew. So again I'll put this up here so you can see it but you can if this was your foot you'd be pushing this quite slowly to start well you can do slow or fast it doesn't matter whether you have your needle down or not um, you control the speed um, and then you're ready to sew. And it's feeding it through quite nicely. It's not moving or anywhere, so it's got quite a good um, feed dogs that holds the fabric in line. And then when you get to the end, you'll need to tie off your um, seam. So your reverse button here, you press down, hold it, and then press your pedal again and the machine will now go back in reverse to tie off. Only needs a few stitches. Now your needle is down at this point so when you lift up this foot you, your fabric won't come out. So you need to turn the flywheel again until your needle gets to the highest position. So you've completed a stitch. This will pull out then nice and easily and then you can use the thread cutter to cut it off. And there's one seam stitched for you. Let's do one more stitch just to show you, um, just cut that end off there, just to show you what the zigzag looks like. So again you pop in your fabric underneath and putting the lever down here. You can choose the stitch here, now B is your selector stitch for your straight stitch on the left but you can alter the zigzag here if you want to, to get the widest width. We're going to choose C because that will give us the widest width and you can actually see how wide it will go. The width of this machine, incidentally, is a 5.5 millimetre width. 
So it's a little bit smaller than some of the other machines you can get, which are seven millimeters and nine millimeters, but as I say, it's, it's pretty standard. This machine will only alter the width of the zigzag because you haven't got a width selector dial that can choose to, to alter the width for all of the stitches. So you can only do um, a width selection up to a maximum of 5.5 on your zigzag. Okay, so we're doing our zigzag here now. And again, we're just gonna put the pedal down and do a zigzag. There we are. And you can go quite fast as well. And then we do the reverse, turn it back, lift the foot up, make sure your needle's in the highest position so that you'll be able to pull your threads out easily and then put your thread off at the cutter. And that's your zigzag there. Also, just to mention on this machine, this lever here that we've been pushing up and down will go that bit higher up. So you can lift it that bit higher, but it doesn't stay there, but it does mean that you can put, um, you know, you can get some um, slightly thicker fabrics through, but not the heaviest ones. So in my opinion, this machine is a beginner machine. Um, it'll get you started through your sewing journey. It doesn't have the width control, um, but that's not really a downside if you're beginning um, because you can select your stitches that you want and each one of those will will stitch it for you so you haven't got to worry about that really um, it's one less thing to, to think about when you start sewing it's nice and lightweight um, but not too lightweight that when you put it on pressure on it that it's not going to suddenly start um, uh, vibrating off the table um, so in that respect it's quite good if anything does jam with it, it's nice and easy inside here to, um, to get your bobbin out. So that's a bonus really. There's two little clips inside. I'll just quickly show you, but I won't do it at the moment. Um, there's two little clips inside that you undo and when you take them out, it pulls your bobbin out. So it's nice and easy. So you don't have to worry about jams. Um, the tension on it's very good. You very often don't have to change it at all much. Um, only when you're saying thicker threads. Um, to begin with, you wouldn't really do that. So the machine comes with a soft cover and I personally would prefer a hard cover, but it does keep the dust off. Um, so whilst you can drop the feed dogs quite easily, um, which I think I've showed you earlier, but just to show you again in here, you, the, the, the lever here you just drop down. Um, when you're actually doing free motion work, it can be, um, uh, sort of labour intensive on the motor so it will do some of it but I think you'd probably want to look for a higher spec model if you were going to do a lot of free motion work. So that would be the HD2200 in the Janome range which we will have a preview of that soon. So this machine is one of their entry level machines so it's aimed at the beginner. I'm going to rate this machine within the range of the Janome manual machines one being very poor and ten being um, absolutely magnificent excellent. Um, I'd put it around about a five and that is in my personal opinion mainly because it hasn't got the width control and there are other ones out there that have got higher spec. That's the end of our review for the Janome J318 machine. Thank you for watching and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Leave us a comment below if you thought it was useful or if there's anything you think we could add. You can subscribe to our channel just hit the subscribe button and if you'd like to see more of us Check us out on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and links are in the description below. And if you'd like to see any more of the machines, go to our website and the link is below. Thanks for watching and hope to see you on the next one.